So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about Amazon ads for authors or how to use the AMS advertising feature in Kindle um, KDP dashboard to advertise your book. So I'll show you what it looks like first on Amazon. I'm just scrolling through Amazon. I search for mermaid because um, I have one book that's doing okay in the mermaid category and right now mermaids are kind of popular so I should be advertising to get a little bit more visibility for people who are searching for mermaid. So when I search for mermaid you get some stuff that just comes up naturally. Um, stuff that usually has mermaid in the title or subtitle so that it's showing up for the word mermaids. Um, but then there's also some sponsored advertisements like this one and also like this one. And so these books have used Amazon ads or AMS um, to show up here. So what you can feature is your book cover and the reviews, um, your title, and then a short description, like a two sentence or one or two sentence description. There's not a lot of text, so that short description is really important because this is all that shows up um, in search results. And the great thing about AMS ads is it looks like native content, which just means most readers wouldn't even notice if this is sponsored or not sponsored. They would just see these results. Um, they all kind of look the same. Actually, the sponsored posts almost look better because they have a little bit of description, whereas the regular results um, usually don't. So it's probably a good idea if you can afford it to put your book, here's another one, um, and sponsor it so that when people are searching for things it shows up. Um, this one's actually a great hook so it's Mermaids Murder Mayhem plunge into an underwater adventure perfect for fans of Alexander Grisso. That's um, I think a stronger hook than the previous two that I showed that were featured. It also has more um, review. So this would be something that probably a lot of people would click on if they're looking for mermaids. This is also a really mermaidy um, cover. So with advertising um, in general, it's hard to be profitable with a 99 cent book. Um, so one of the advantages of advertising is that you can put your price up to 499 or 399, um, 299 and try to make sales. It's harder like you need reviews, otherwise you're not really going to get the sales at any price point. Um, but once you have enough reviews, you can sometimes charge a higher price point and spend more money on Amazon ads to get the visibility that you need. If I click here on one of these mermaid books, um, and this is an older book from 2011, then on the book page, what you'll also see um, on the one hand are also bots, which are here, customers who bought this item also bought these other books. Um, and then right below it, you'll see sponsored products related to this item. And again, most readers, they don't really know um, what's going on. They don't, well, they don't pay that much attention, I think. They just see the book cover. So if you can get your book to show up here um, on another author's page, that's pretty great. Um, this one is more, it's not, this ad space is not something that you can buy, um, I think, unless you're in one of Amazon's um, premium programs or in a certain kind of um, publishing house. I'll ask, this is um, by Michelle Maddow actually, so I can ask her how she got featured here. There's also an advertisement um, over on this side, which looks a little bit different. These ones I believe are product display ads. We'll um, look into those categories and, and details a little bit um, in more detail in a minute. And these are the sponsored um, advertisements. So what you really notice about the AMS ads is you only have the cover, you have the title and the subtitle, um, author name, number of reviews, price, and then you have this little bit of um, text. So a big part, maybe half of getting um, an ad right is just figuring out what text works the best. And this is kind of why um, Amazon ads are really great to start with because you can start with a really low budget um, and test a whole bunch of little hooks like this using, I mean, it's almost as much as like a tweet. So you have to try dozens of little combinations um, and try to find something that works the best. So it's getting the most clicks from the right audience. So now I'm just back in my KDP dashboard and what I'm gonna try to do um, is set up a new ad for Shearwater. I haven't done AMS ads for a while, so I'm curious if things have changed a little bit, although I don't think so. I go to promote and advertise here and then I go to create an ad campaign. And then I have a choice between sponsored products and product display ads. Um, like I mentioned, product display ads are the ones that show up over here on the right hand side under a specific product. 
Um, and the way these work is you can choose specific products you want your book to show up for. Um, I believe you can pick, you know, 100, 200. Um, last time I set it up, I think I set up over 200 product display ads for potential um, kind of competitors. So you look for other books that share an audience. So those readers of that other book or people looking for that other book um, will also see your book. So these um, depend a lot on the cost and the competitiveness because if there's a lot of people who are trying to use ads um, and there's a lot of competitors, it will drive the cost per click or per um, visibility up, which means it may become too expensive for you to be profitable with advertising. But you can try to get different kinds of visibility for less um, by targeting different products in, in this category. And so for example, um, in my mermaid book, I could just target the top, you know, 100 mermaid books um, and have my book show up on their pages if I spend enough um, for the bid. But I've actually tried that before and it's a little limiting because um, mermaids haven't been hugely popular before. They're much more popular right now, so more people are searching for them. Um, but generally, like, the potential readers of my books are not just mermaid readers. Um, I write young adult sci-fi and fantasy, so it's really, you know, sci-fi and fantasy um, in general. I may want to target other books that are fantasy, you know, the fallen angels or, or vampires or whatever that aren't necessarily mermaids because I'll be getting more visibility. So you don't want to be too specific and think like readers will only like this one thing. Um, also, I'm working on a nonfiction book about creativity, kind of creativity and business, and I can target my book to show up to people who like, you know, um, digital nomads or starting an online business or art or painting. Um, there's a whole bunch of different categories where potential readers may be interested in my book, even if my book isn't exactly what they're looking for right now. You also have sponsored product ads, um, which show up here kind of in the native content. So they look a little more natural. Um, I think these stand out a little bit more. On the other hand, they stand out and it's the only ad that looks like that on the page. So they can be more effective just in a different way. Um, I have heard that product display ads are better possibly because they're a little harder to use. So the authors who are willing to work harder um, and really spend time testing and tweaking their ads will be able to spend less money on advertising and have better results. So if you can make that work for you, um, then that's great. Sponsored products, I think, is easier to set up and a little more intuitive. Um, so what happens is you add in, instead of adding like different products that are competitors to your book um, or similar books that are related to yours, you choose keywords. So you have to make a big keyword list of, I believe it's less than 1,000 keywords. I've heard people who have really good success with 200 or 500. Um, you kind of need to test different things out. So what's happening is on the one hand, you're choosing your targeting. It's either the keywords that you're targeting or the other um, books that you're targeting your ad to show up next to. And so the targeting is one really big factor. Um, and then also the, the actual ad copy and how well that ad copy and your book cover is converting. If you don't have enough reviews, um, I'm assuming like if you have enough reviews and your book cover is really good, then it's just about tweaking your ad copy. However, if you're trying to advertise a book without reviews or that doesn't have a very good cover, that's not intuitive or it's not obvious what the book is about, um, that's gonna hurt your results. So you can, once you start advertising, you'll have to figure out things like, firstly, am I getting enough visibility for the ad? If my ads are just not displaying at all, um, then I'm probably not choosing the right targeting or I'm not spending enough on bid. And the other part of that is if you are getting a lot of visibility, um, your targeting is right and your bid is okay, Amazon's showing the ads, but nobody's clicking on the ads, then there's a problem with your basic offer. So maybe your description, that little blurb you wrote just isn't good enough, or it could be a pretty strong indication that your cover isn't good enough. Or if you have less than 10 or 20 reviews, I'd say less than 10 reviews, that's probably your problem. More than 10 reviews, I think on an ad is probably enough. One more thing I'll mention, um, sponsored products tend to take off faster, so you can set it up um, and set a bid and set your targeting and they work, you see the results. And that can make it easier for um, authors to use because you can kind of just set them up and, and leave them and let them run. Whereas product display ads 
can take a long time. Um, I generally set them up for like six weeks and it may be four or five weeks until they even get started, um, which can be frustrating because you don't want to like start advertising in a month and a half. You want to do it like right now. Um, so this is generally something you want to think about if you're doing um, like a, a launch and you need the sales really quickly, you might want to go to sponsored products. What tends to work the best for authors who are really serious about Amazon ads and they do well, um, I believe they set up a lot of both kinds of ads, um, but they also keep setting up a lot of new ads. So maybe twice a week they set up five new ads per book. Um, I know a lot of authors who have hundreds of different ads and they keep spreadsheets of, of everything that they're doing um, because if you test enough, you can figure out how to do it better. So you find out like what doesn't work, what's not working, you test the, the copy, the sales copy, um, you test your targeting. If you get everything right, you're trying to keep your ad spend down so you get more visibility, more impressions, more clicks, um, and more sales while spending less money because ultimately this stuff doesn't work unless you can be profitable. You can't spend a thousand bucks on Amazon unless you're making a thousand bucks or more in book sales. And also it's easier to spend more money if you have a higher priced product. So if you have a series and you can advertise um, a cheaper free book or even just the first book in the series, and then you also know that, you know, if you have seven books in the series and your average reader um, is worth about $5 in acquisition costs, meaning most like out of a uh, hundred readers, so many will continue to read the whole series so that, you know, if you can figure out um, how much you're earning, then you also can know how much you can spend on advertising. So I'm going to go in and try to actually set um, some of these up. I believe I have one advertisement running for Shearwater, but it's been a long time. So I'll see how it looks. So I chose sponsored product. It asked me which book I want to advertise. Um, this one comes up, so I'll just select that. I can choose a campaign name, which you might want to do, especially if you have lots and lots to keep track of. I know authors who have um, different systems of these. I'll mention if I haven't already, um, Brian Meeks has a book on mastering Amazon ads. And Michael Cooper also has one. Actually, Michael Co Cooper's is actually about um, advertising books on Facebook. So I'll mention that again later or build a resources page. So I have to choose an average daily budget. And this is also kind of scary because um, people say, like uh, there's a difference between Facebook and Amazon because Facebook will spend all the money you give them right away. Um, Amazon is slow to spend your money because they don't really care about making money from authors. Their business model is based on readers and customers. So they don't want to be too aggressive with their advertising. They allow authors to advertise, um, but they don't want to do it in a way that, that doesn't um, make readers unhappy with the, with the platform. Um, but my point of all that is that sometimes Amazon will spend less than 10% um, of your daily budget or your total budget. So I've tried putting this at like, I mean, you kind of want to be safe. So you want to start at maybe $1 a day or $2 a day or $5 a day, even five bucks a day is 150 a month. So if the ads aren't working, you don't want to be losing money um, on advertising. However, what you'll generally figure out, even though it's a little risky, if you start trying bigger budgets um, is that Amazon just isn't spending your money. So even at $5 a day, I doubt that it'll spend 50 cents or a dollar per day. So then you can either run the campaign continuously starting today, um, or you can select a date range. When I select a date range, um, I've tried different things. I think generally you want to leave it for about six weeks. And like I said, you want to start new ads once or twice a week. I've also heard some things about like running too many competing ads and then none of them will really take off or just one of them will take off. If you're just starting out, I would recommend setting up a little bit of everything, especially, you know, try one book, see what you can do um, in terms of visibility and conversion and sales. So you might want to start, um, you want to maybe have one selection that's run campaign continuously starting today and another one that's selected date range. However, like I also said earlier, the description that you have for the book is really important. So what you really need to do is set it at something like $1 a day, um, choose run campaign continuously starting today, and then make 10 different advertisements using different text, because that's really going to make a big difference. So if you test 10 different advertisements with run campaign continuously, um, you don't have to run them forever, but maybe run them for a month and see out of those 10 ads, which one is working the best. 
Um, Because if you can figure that out, what the best hook is, what the best text is for your ad, that's also what you want to use for your book description um, and also for your Facebook ads if you get if you um, get into Facebook ads later. It's usually cheaper, I think, to test this stuff out on Amazon because you can set the budget really low and because it won't spend the money very quickly. So if you don't have a good performing ad, um, Amazon won't spend the money. Whereas with Facebook, Facebook can spend all of your money um, even if you're not getting any sales. But I'm going to show you what this looks like. So I'm going to run a campaign starting continuously um, for $1 a day. Then you can choose automatic targeting or manual targeting. And this is also something you would want to test out. So kind of keep track. Um, you don't have to make 10 ads for each. Maybe I'll make three ads. I'll take my, my three best sales copy ideas. Um, however, the more variations you have, the better this is going to work. So maybe the first time you set it up, um, you have three different variations. And the next time, you know, maybe every week you think of three different ways. And this can be like short hooks or um, part of your introduction or part of the reviews. Although I'll have to check if it's, um, I think technically it may not be okay to use reviews as part of your ad copy, but I haven't checked for a while. So if I choose automatic, automatic targeting, um, then I can choose my cost per click. So this is the effectiveness of this price is going to depend on what other authors in your category um, are bidding and what keywords you're bidding on. So if I just do automatic targeting, I would probably, I think the recommended default is 25 cents. Um, personally, I would leave it at that because I want these ads to start working and I'm kind of lazy, but I know a lot of authors um, will start off at like 1.5 because the whole point of it is to figure out how to spend less. Um, so if you are methodical and you have a lot of patience um, and if you have a lot of books like a big backlist you can spend basically this is a full-time job you could just you know twice a week check into your Amazon um, dashboard and manage all of your ads and that's all the book marketing you really need to do and I have a lot of friends who do tremendously well only with AMS ads and without any other form of marketing so I'm gonna leave mine at the default of 25 cents and then I'll put my custom text here so what I've done is just copy some of the um, a little pieces of the description or some reviews. Um, I checked and apparently you can leave reviews um, in the AMS copy, the sales copy. Um, however, but I've heard um, mixed results on that. I think I've heard that some people say that you can or you can't. I'm going to try it anyway for some of these ads. Um, I believe they'll either get approved or not approved. They also may not, not approve some ads if they have um, exclamation points or if they have something like, you know, it's on sale at 99 cents, or even sometimes for a typo or spelling or punctuation issue, if they don't like the way that you've punctuated um, something, if you have non-standard characters, they might reject all of this. So this is what I came up from my first one. This probably isn't great. Um, I kind of wanted to see, since I think Shape of Water um, is popular right now after the movie. Um, I'm not sure if I can get away with using this, but I'm gonna try it. If Shape of Water left you wanting more mermaid romance, this epic supernatural adventure set in Ireland will captivate you. So on the one hand, I'm kind of keyword stuffing. I don't need to be because keywords won't really help this to show up anymore. Um, on the other hand, I want to be really specific and clear about what the book is. I'll try some different ads later um, with different kinds of sales copy, but I think I'm going to use that one for the first. So I actually second-guessed myself. I rewrote it a little bit. A brooding supernatural thriller with a touch of murder and mystery for Shape of Water fans looking for more mermaid romance. Um, even so, I don't think it's great. The thing with this is you, you kind of have to just write a whole bunch of them and test them all out um, because it's hard to know what's going to really perform well for you. Anyway, I'm going to leave that one up and go ahead and see what happens. So here I'll submit my campaign for review. That one was successful, so I'll go to try another one. So I'm going to go to sponsored products again because, like I said, there are several different variations we haven't tried yet. So I'm selecting the same book. I'll do $1 a day again. I'll do run campaign continuously starting today again, but this time I'll do manual targeting. So with manual targeting, um, I can also set, I'll do the default of 25 cents again. Um, I'm not necessarily like recommending this, as I said, Experts usually bid lower in the beginning. 
but I want my books to get um, as much visibility as possible. And I know a lot of my competitors are probably already charging more than this. So I, I kind of just want to kind of bid high and um, make sure my books are seen. So this is suggested keywords. I can add these if I want to. You don't actually want to use keywords that are for your book. Like if someone's searching for DS Murphy or Derek Murphy or Shearwater, they already know the name of my book. So I don't want to show them an ad so that when they click the ad to find my book, I have to pay for that. If they are already um, looking for me, then my other marketing has worked. They already recognize the name um, and I want Amazon to just show them the right book without me paying for it. So I don't actually want to use these keywords, so I wouldn't use at all. Um, but I'll add some of these basic ones, mermaid books, supernatural romance. What I actually want to do is go up here to add your own keywords. And when I go to add your own keywords, it's just going to show me a box, um, enter one keyword per, li per line. So this is where if I had built a big list um, of potential keywords, and this is something I do with KDP Rocket, um, I could put the whole, I could dump the whole file here. If you don't use KDP Rocket, I'll do a quick um, demonstration. You can search for a certain keyword. Um, I wouldn't actually search for mermaid because I think the results would be too limited, but I might search for young adult or books for teens or something like that. Um, and then I would get the results. Um, and these results may not all be perfect, but a lot of them are probably a good start. And you don't necessarily know what's going to um, sell well, so you kind of have to just try lots of different things. I've also heard that specific genre um, genres keywords don't work as well. You really want um, author names or book titles. So you may want to like start with some of this stuff. Um, but then you have the name of the book and then also the author name. And you'll export all this stuff into um, an Excel file and then combine all the Excel files. I've actually had trouble combining my Excel files, so I found someone on Fiverr who can do it for me. But then I, I end up with an Excel file that looks like this. Um, it has a whole bunch of keywords. I can just select all these keywords and then I'll paste it into my dashboard. I actually did a lot of research a while ago, so I have um, one file with 258 um, keywords in it. I'm gonna see if I can use that many. Yeah, so there is actually a, um, a 1,000 keyword maximum. So now I have to delete half of these. So I've done that and now my ad looks like this. I have a whole bunch of different keywords. Um, they're set at 25 cents per click. But it's also set at $1 a day. So what will probably happen is I'll get um, about four clicks a day for $1 a day. Hopefully one of those people will buy the book. If so, I'm spending $1 a day um, to make about $3 a day, so that would be great. So I have set up another ad with um, a little bit of a different text, and I'm just going to submit this one also. I'm going to go in and try to set up one more. Another sponsored product. And I'm going to do the $1 again and the manual targeting again, but this time I'm going to select a different date range. And I could just let it run to no end date, um, but I'm going to give it about six weeks. So I said to end in May, I'm going to add my own keywords again, and I'm going to use the other half of that list um, that I didn't use earlier. So in this one, I'm going to try to put quotes around this first phrase just as a way to break it up and see if I can um, get that one approved so it looks like a review. So I'll go down and submit this one also. So this time I'll go over and take a look at product display ads now that I've set up some sponsored products. Now when I select a book to advertise it'll show me target your ad by product or by interest. So here's another place where you should probably try both. So you can do it by product um, in which case you would need a specific list of product. You could either target related categories. Um, for example, I could just have it show in science fiction and fantasy, um, which would probably be pretty good. So I might want to set one of those up quickly. I'm just going to set it for $100 and I'll do the um, default campaign settings, which looks like it's about two months. And then I can also say run campaign as quickly as possible or spread campaign evenly over its duration 
generally I just like them to use my money as quickly as possible so I'll leave that first one out and then this one which displays like this gives you some place for a headline and some text the text box is also a little bit longer so I had to um, edit some things and try to come up with a few extra words if you really want to test everything accurately um, you should probably actually set up all these ads I've been setting up with the same text because I've been doing different kinds of ads so I'd want to see the same text with all the different kind of ads to see which performs the best um, so like I would have my five or ten different paragraphs and then I would use those on all the different kinds of ads that there are um, and set up maybe 50 ads for those five different variations so I'm going to submit that one also then I'm going to go back and set up another product display ad and then this time I still have the option of going down to um, by interest and I can choose a specific category interest um, or by product and by product I can do the targeted related categories which is what I just did um, a minute ago but this time I'm going to go to target specific category products um, so then what I would do is search by keyword product name and it would give me suggestions so if I search for mermaid um, if I search for mermaid it would show me mermaid books like I said earlier I don't think mermaid targeting is really ideal for this book although I really want to show up next to all the the big mermaid books too um, really I want to search for young adult fantasy and look for bestsellers through here so I could go through and pick out um, and I would kind of have to know my genre like you have to know what these books are and what's doing well what's already selling um, mermaid sister is a big competitor of mine that that sells crazy well even after many years it has like 3,000 reviews um, so that's one I would want to be featured in and one thing you could do for example is you want to make sure your also bots are really good for your book so I think targeted targeting specific products um, is really smart when you have a book out on pre-order and you want to pre-populate those also bot sections so you could either pick like a hundred or a couple hundred um, books just so it gets more visibility or you could focus on like 20 books really hard um, which yeah, I mean you might want to try a little bit of, of both the danger is like if it's 20 books that don't get a lot of visibility you really need to pick like top 100 books like really popular books that get lots and lots of visibility um, if so if you have the biggest bid and you're showing up right on their page um, that can be really useful so I've set this one up again um, for 25 cents a hundred dollar total budget about two months run campaign as quickly as possible um, since I'm already trying out a different um, field which is by product and choosing these you, you kind of have to choose if you really want to test well you only want one variation at a time so I've set this one up with about 117 different um, books and I set up for 25 cents and a hundred dollars like the other ones for two months I added in my um, text so I'm gonna go down here and submit to review so now in my AMS dashboard under advertising campaigns this is where I would see all of my my campaigns and here I have five that I just set up that are pending review three of those have a daily budget of a dollar two of them have a hundred dollar budget um, and once these start going if they're approved we'll start to see results and then you can measure how good the ads are like if they're working if they're profitable so it's hard to show everything um, and I don't I haven't run ads for quite a while actually so you'll see um, I have some old stuff that's expired um, but already has results this one was seven dollars a day um, it got almost half a million views which is not bad but only 200 clicks which is not good so it was probably showing to the wrong audience um, it got a lot of visibility but the sales copy or the cover or whatever it just wasn't the right fit for the impressions that it was getting um, so even though it got some clicks it, it didn't convert very well this is the average cost per click which is 15 cents which is pretty good um, I spent about $30 and I made $20 so on the one hand I lost money with this one on the other hand um, every sale boosted my rank on Amazon and because this book is also in Kindle Unlimited I also have to keep in mind that I probably got Kindle Unlimited page read so even though on the surface it looks like I lost money here um, actually I am kind of happy with 158 percent that means you're losing money um, you have to have under 100 percent almost really under 70 percent to call it a, a really profitable ad um, so ideally you want to keep this this number down um, as much as possible that's really what you're going for 
This one is another one, for example, um, the daily budget was actually $100. It got $300,000 um, for 90 clicks. So this is quite a bit better because I got double the clicks for less visibility. Um, so the targeting was better. I paid a little more, $0.22 cents per click. Um, but in this one, I paid 108 bucks and I made 220 bucks. So that one's um, still going pretty well. I've got a 49% um, ACOS, which is kind of like your return. And this is one that I think has been running since October, um, set for $100 daily, and I've only spent just over $100 in all that time, like in the last five or six months. So that's why I say even sometimes if you set this higher, like I actually don't think these $1 daily bids um, will get any impressions, but I could figure out if they're good ads. And if they seem like good ads, um, then I could copy them like this and then just tweak things. So I could copy it and raise the daily spend, for example, or I could raise the cost per click. Um, experts who are better at this would say, don't copy, always start off with a brand new ad because it's better for really keeping track. Um, and that's true, like you really wanna focus on your conversion and how much you're spending. You wanna make sure that it's profitable. So if you really wanna deep dive in this, um, I recommend getting Brian Meek's this course or book, uh, which it goes into a lot greater detail. But for just starting off, I think, you know, set a dollar a day budget. Um, I actually, personally, even though I know I'm not supposed to, I'll go into these ads later. And if it's working, I might um, tweak, tweak it a little bit by upping the daily spend um, or increasing the cost per click. I'm gonna scroll down and, and see if I can show you any more. So here's one that I set for two months, um, product display. I actually had a $1,200 budget, um, but it looks like it only spent 80 cents. So out of this $1,200 budget for two months, um, it just wasn't displaying. It only reached 500 people. Some ads, they just don't really take off. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. That's kind of why you just have to test lots of things because some of your ads just aren't gonna work. It's possible because I set up three of these or four of these at the same time, they all had really big budgets, um, 1,200 on each of these. Like I said, that seems like it would be really risky. Um, on the other hand, these product display ads never took off um, for me. And that could be my targeting or my keywords or whatever reason, maybe my product display was, was too limited. Um, which again is kind of why I said earlier, product display ads, like if you can get them to work, they're probably gonna be better for you but I think they probably take more experimentation and learning to get them to work, whereas sponsored products um, are easier to spend your money faster and see results. Here are some more I set up um, earlier. This is the time travel book that I have had trouble selling kind of since the beginning. It just doesn't stick well. Um, and here are some more variations I set up earlier. Several of these were $40 um, a day, sponsored products. Um, and this one was $400 a day. So on the $400 a day one, I got a lot more impressions, um, 227,000. I got some clicks, I paid about 38 cents per click, which is pretty high, even this one's 43 cents per click. Um, I was probably bidding high just because I was frustrated and trying to get the ads to work. Um, the problem with that is even though I got some sales, um, my return was pretty bad. So it looks like I spent about um, $30 to make $3. So I only earned 10% of what I spent, uh, which is not great. That's why like this doesn't work unless you can make this number under 100 because otherwise you're just kind of throwing money away. Um, but again, even though the daily spend was $400, which could have been lots and lots of money, like on Amazon, if you spend a, four, uh, sorry, on Facebook, if you spend a daily spend of $400, Facebook will spend it in a day, it'll be gone. Um, on Amazon, even though I put this up higher at 40, $400, it's only spent $62. Um, and that was lifetime because these I had started, I set them up and they had no closing date here. Um, so it just never really spent very much money. This is something I would like to, to revisit um, because if you look at, for example, these ads, I'm obviously doing something wrong. These are young adult time travel romance. Um, I tried a bunch of product display ads. I tried a bunch of sponsored product ads. Um, I had pretty big budgets and click spend, but they just weren't working. They weren't profitable. Um, only this one that you know barely sold anything um, had a pretty good return. And that's probably because that book is a little bit off genre. It's a little harder to market. Is it you know a zombie th zombie thriller or young adult time travel? 
Um, so that's some of what I was facing. But also probably my targeting was wrong, my keywords could have been wrong. That's something, um, if, you, if I wanted to keep investing time in um, figuring it out, I could get that book to sell. However, um, like I said earlier, it's really easier to do this if you have a series and you can sell. So like, even if I was losing some money on book one, if I had a whole series done, um, it could be profitable to advertise. Here are a few more from um, last year. It's kind of funny me making a video because I think these results are pretty bad, but um, this is also something, maybe it's kind of nice to see other people, you know, not getting it right the first time. Um, so like some of my return is really bad on these. And even some of these I've spent quite a bit of money on. This one is a $30 daily budget. It's been going since July of, of 2017. Um, and it's actually spent $2,700, which is quite a bit of money. I've only made, you know, less than a thousand back. Um, so I'm spending three times more than I'm earning. However, because this is a really long book and it's in Kindle Unlimited, um, I earn that money back from page read. So I'm, I'm probably breaking even or um, earning a bit. I think Shearwater has probably made three or 4,000 um, since that time. So I'm still, you know, at least I'm basically breaking even. So I'm getting um, free visibility. So even though I'm spending too much on this, um, it's not the end of the world. On the other hand, um, if I was smart about it, since I just set up all those new ads, I can just pause this ad for a while or terminate it. Right now I'm just gonna pause it um, because if I could spend less money, you know, ideally that would be what I would wanna do. And I think I could get there with more um, tweaking and testing. So it is interesting to check on, like if I can see what this ad is doing, I could probably check, this is a sponsored products ad. I could check the sales copy um, and my targeting and my keywords and I could see if I could um, basically duplicate this ad. I could even try just copying it and then improving it um, and hopefully getting that cost down. So it looks like this ad um, was actually an automatically targeting ad um, and my cost per click was really high. It was 95 cents um, which is way too high so I'm actually going to change it to 50. I might even go lower maybe like 35 and then I'm just going to keep the same text um, that I was using before so I'll duplicate that one and then there's another one that I've had running for a long time um, since June of 2017 $50 daily spend it's um, spent $1,500 and made 825 so that's also um, not great but I mean compared to some of my others like this one you know it's really terrible um, this one's not that bad. So I could consider um, copying it and trying to tweak it, um, changing the, the targeting or the bids and keeping my costs down. Seeing it, um, also changing the sales copy because probably um, it's a problem if, you know, not if, this is basically like a 1% um, click through rate if I have 6 million views and only 7,000 um, clicks. So this just means it's not, the sales copy isn't hooking the reader. Um, so that's why it's really important to have really strong sales copy and get more clicks. You really want to find the ads like this one um, that are under 100 and then focus on those and seeing how you can do those better. Once you set up an ad, you'll start to, you can click on the ad um, itself and get more specific um, information about how the ad went. So these are all the keywords. Um, it'll tell you what you are bidding. It'll tell you how many impressions your keyword has gotten, how many clicks, um, and then ultimately how many people are actually buying the book. So you can, um, for example, I can click over here on ACOS and I can see what are my best converting keywords? What are the keywords that are um, converting really well? You might want to delete any of these that are way too high um, and just get rid of those because they're not working and then go down until you find these. And these would really be your gold um, keywords. So these keywords, I would either spend a little bit more to stay competitive. You could raise your bid um, a little bit more, although that might affect your ACOS. But even if you look a little deeper um, and you get into these that are 30% or less, um, those are pretty great keywords. Um, I'm surprised I'm even getting um, good results in sales from some of these keywords, which are pretty um, famous authors and series but I could just kind of copy these um, keywords that are working really well for me and set up a new ad or clone this ad and just get rid of all of those other keywords that aren't performing 
um, and focus on the ones that are. And that's kind of how you get better. You just have to keep tweaking, um, seeing what's really working well, seeing you know what sales copy gets the be- the most clicks. Um, so it's a it's a balance between between spending enough and setting your budget and setting your your deadlines to get enough visibility and then also making sure your sales copy is converting to clicks and then also using the keywords and the sales copy that's attracting the right readers that actually buy um, the book. So I know it can seem like a lot of work to set all this up. That's actually why I'm not great at it and I don't use these um, so much yet. Although when I do have finished series, um, AMS ads are gonna be the main thing that I do for marketing. I'm not really gonna do anything else Um, just because they can be super profitable once you're willing to spend some time on them. Um, Like I said also, I'm not an expert. I recommend other people who are um, a little more excited about Excel sheets um, than I am. This kind of technical stuff um, seems like like not something I want to spend my time doing, and that's actually what most, I think, a lot of authors feel the same way, Um, which is why if you are, you know, if you do get serious about AMS ads and you learn how to do them really well, it puts you at a huge advantage um, over just about everybody because really it's only self-published authors who can even use AMS ads because we get them through our um, KDP dashboard. So traditionally published authors can't really do it anyway. Um, And the vast majority of self-published authors aren't just, they're either not gonna have books um, or or book covers or enough book reviews that are are gonna make it worthwhile um, or they're not gonna spend enough time investing in it. So this is definitely a skill I'm, determined to get better at because I know that this is like the main way to sell books um, and I hope that my video kind of gave you a, a basic introduction but um, definitely if you're interested in these do some more research uh, check out Brian Meek's book or some other um, experts at AMS ads.